Hey everybody, my name is Chris Johnson and today I'm going to show you how I edit together videos like this. Let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, as you can see, I'm editing in Adobe Premiere and I've already got my video and audio synced up in my project timeline. Cool. I'm going to take everything that I just played and type it out in my notation software finale. Alright, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and start out with the default document which kind of has some of my custom stuff set up here. For right now, I'm going to completely reformat all of this. So I'm just going to type everything into score mode like this. Now I played this on trumpet, which means it's going to be B flat transposition. I'm going to write it out the way that I played it and then transpose it into concert pitch. All right, with these exercises, the way I have them set up is first I play everything ascending, then I play everything descending, then I start alternating. I'm going to take this ascending version and descending version, copy and paste them over here. Let's take off this filter, copy and paste them. And now I can take every other part and paste in the descending so I don't have to redo everything. All right, like so. And then let's do the same thing here. Let's take this ascending part and paste it here. Let's take this ascending part and paste it here. All right, I'm gonna get rid of all the excess at the end. Now I wanna set this up where every three bars there's a double bar. So I'm gonna select my measure tool, Command A, double click, and let's actually make it a solid bar line here for every three bars. Cool. I'm going to put my chord changes on top now. I'm going to do C6, C7. And a quick pro tip, if you do shift and this backslash, you kind of get this vertical line. With that vertical line, you can get a really cool looking slash chord. So if I had just typed this as C7 and then forward slash E, it looks decent. But if I type in C7, vertical line E, it gives you that kind of like offset look and it looks really cool. Type this in as F6. This is going to be F sharp, diminished 7. Come back to C6 again, vertical line G. Now, I don't feel like retyping all of this, so I'm going to grab all this, hit Edit Filter, come down here to None, Chords and Fretboards. I'm going to do Command C to copy. And I could go through and do Command V, Command V, etc., right? But instead, I'm going to do paste multiple. So I'm going to select these bars, hit Command C, and my shortcut is going to be Control Command V. And it says paste horizontally to the end of the score. So now my chord change is going all the way across. Now, again, in scroll view, you can see it, you know, it looks this way, but I want to show you exactly how I'm going to lay it out for the actual presentation. So let's hit Command E and come back here. And what I want is I don't need any of this text. So I'm going to hit Command A with the text tool, get rid of all that. And then what I want to see is just basically just like one big vertical line of music that's going to go all the way through. So I'm going to change my margins a bit. I'm going to start out by grabbing my main selection tool, hit Command A, and I'm going to force it to be one bar per system. So let's do Command Shift M, and we're going to change this so it's only one measure per system. All right, which looks crazy right now, right? All right, and then I want to fit all 12 of these on one page. Now, I do want you to notice I have this loop deck here, and I have a lot of these shortcuts built into the loop deck. I can go to page layout, space systems evenly, but I've also already got this set here where um, directly from here, if I just hit space for my loop deck, I can change this to be 12 systems per page. Now, this looks crazy. This isn't what I want my end product to look like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just change my margins so that I have a much longer document and it's a skinnier document so that it looks like a straight column of music. 
So uh, I'm going to come over here to page layout. I'm going to go to document, page format for the score. And I'm going to change the score. Um, let's try out doing our width as just being two. So it's just uh, two inches wide. And we can see we're running out of quite a bit of room here. So I'm going to start out by just putting this height at 18 and see if I like that spacing. Now notice initially in Finale it doesn't do anything. It just, you know, you change it and you have to go through and do what's called redefine pages. Again, I can go to page layout, redefine pages, all pages of current part score. And we can see what we're dealing with. All right, so the margins were a bit too skinny, um, but if I space this as evenly here and do 12, I can see that the height is actually pretty decent. So let's go through here again, back to page format for score. And let's try doubling this, make the width four, and then hit OK here. And let's redefine and space once again. And that actually looks pretty good. Now, if we're picturing, we're going through and we're scrolling through the music. So it looks pretty good. All right, cool. Um, I personally don't want to have the measure numbers here. I just don't think it's necessary. So I'm going to hit the measure tool here. Go to measure, edit measure number regions. And I'm just going to delete this. So now you can see I just have a column of music coming all the way down through all of the different exercises. All right. Feel pretty good about it. Uh, one thing that I want to do here is now move this into the key of B flat. So the, I'm, the notes you heard me playing were in concert B flat, but I'm playing them on trumpet. This is the way I would read it, but I want to make this successful with everybody. So I'm going to grab the key signature tool, command A, and just right click and come down here to B flat major. And let's grab everything down the octave like so. And it's looking pretty good. I'm going to raise these chord changes up just a bit globally. Now, sometimes you'll be tempted to grab the handles for the chord changes and start hitting the up arrow. Try to not get in that habit. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is use these handles here. And if I grab this handle, it'll globally move all the chord changes up. So this is looking pretty fantastic. That's what I want. And uh, I'm happy. So I'm going to grab this bottom tool or this last tool. And this is going to be my graphics tool for a finale. Now, under my graphics tool, I'm going to hit Export Pages. Uh, note that I've set the re resolution to 1200, which is way bigger than it probably needs to be. And I've allowed for transparency just in case I want to do something fancy with the notation. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to save this. Let's go down here to my Office Hours 527 Ads. And this is going to be under my Playing Examples. This is the second Play Example. So I'll just put this as Play 2. And all these examples are from my new ebook, Progressions You Should Know, which if you're interested in unlocking the power of understanding chord function, scales, voice leading, and more, go ahead and check out Progressions You Should Know. It's a new ebook. I think you'll love it. Dive into it. Anyway, back to how to edit this stuff. All right, I'm going to save this as Play 2 because that's my example. I am going to hit Command S here. I can't believe I didn't save this document this whole time. Please forgive me. I'm also going to save this as play two, just so that I have everything documented. So my finale file, my uh, video file, all that is all in one place. All right, now that I have that set, um, I should be ready to go ahead and bring this into Premiere. So I'm gonna hop over here to Premiere, look at the second example, and let's go ahead and drag in our image file and get everything to sync. So again, come down to that same location. Here it is under play. Great. Play two. And I'm going to drag this on top and let's see what this looks like. All right. As you can see, you can barely see it because right now it does have transparency, which means you can kind of see that like B flat seven over D there. I'm going to insert in a white background. All right. There's a bunch of ways we can do this. I just happen to keep a folder called background colors. And one that I have is just called white. And I can just drag that right underneath. And now I have this white overlay that's all set. All right, the first thing I wanna do is reduce this down to be the size, the exact size of this horizontal frame that I have. Now, for me, I like to create the role kind of like at this halfway point and then export it as its own video before I make it vertical, just in case I later on wanna go through and make both a horizontal version and a vertical version. All right, so I'm gonna focus right now on this part. I'm gonna gra grab this Play 2 file 
come up to here to where it says effect controls. And what I want to do is alter my scale. Now I can click this scale and kind of click and drag down like so. And that's pretty decent. But this loop deck also has some features built in. Um, I did some customizing with this and I have these different adjusting parameters here. So now that I'm selected on this, if I hit this, I just have this set to like kind of like basic adjustments. Here's micro adjustments. And then these are like macro adjustments. I can go like really big and small. So I think I left enough room left and right. I feel pretty decent about that. I don't think it'll ever need to be quite this wide. Great. Now I want to grab this position. So this is going to be my left right position. This is going to be my, um, my up and down position. And I want to drag this all the way to the beginning of the music. So I'm going to use this macro to scroll all the way down until we get to the very first example. It's going to take a while. That's okay. It's totally worth it. Now my goal right now is to get the top of this to be kind of like around this halfway point here. Okay. And now you can see my music starts at about this halfway point. And you can see I'm dead center right in the middle here. I'm almost wondering. All right, there we go. Let's move it over to the left just a little bit. Okay, so now I've got my music at about this halfway point. Now I'm not worried right now about what it looks like on top of the video. All I want to do is just make sure that I have it synced together with the music at this point. So I'm going to drag this down and make sure that this lasts for my entire example. So that way, all the way through to end, my play file's there. And I'm going to extend this white background the same way. All right. Now you're not going to see me for a minute. I'm so sorry, but instead what you're going to get is you're just going to have this set up here. All right. All right. So basically what I'm going to do is I want to uh, do some keyframing now on this play 2png from the very beginning. I want to make sure that I have this position locked in place. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle this animation by clicking here. All right. And then I don't want this to move until I get to bar two. Okay, good. So you can kind of hear, I'm using my left and right arrows. You can kind of hear the audio preview. Right here is where I want to be able to see that E flat six. So all I have to do now, because I have this locked in from the beginning, is it'll automatically start playing from the very beginning. But actually I want to keyframe right here so that it really starts playing from this B flat six. All right, here we go. All right, so now I'm gonna grab this file and I'm gonna move this up so that my E flat six is about now, is now in frame, right? Can't quite see the next bar, but here I am. And now check out what this looks like from the beginning. gonna see what happened okay I'm gonna do the same thing here again I still have play two selected and just by adjusting this it's automatically gonna create the next keyframe okay and here I am and I'm just basically just trying to get it where it lands just short of the treble clef here okay here's the next example I'm gonna do the same thing I'm still selected I'm gonna move this up so we can hear the next example. Right? Great. Okay, and now this time through, I'm gonna grab this, but just in case you don't have a loop deck at home, I'm gonna show you how I can just grab this and just do the same thing. I'm just kind of dragging. It's a little bit less cooperative <laughs> when you do it this way. Just moving a lot of information here. All right, here we go. And now I've got it up. Okay, and then this time, I'm definitely gonna utilize my, my loop deck here. And let's drag this up where it needs to go. Great. Okay, again, just short of the treble clef here. Okay, once again, grab play two, let's move them up to 
just short of the treble clef, you can see how much time the loop deck is saving me. Okay, once again, let's grab this, move it up. And notice it's keyframing this automatically. As soon as I create motion, it automatically keyframes because I had toggled that um, toggled that keyframing here. Okay. Okay, and then something got off. Oh no. Hold on. We lost some of our keyframing. I was doing too much talking. I lost some of my keyframing, but that is okay. Here we are. I just jump right back in. No problem. Okay. Oh, that wasn't in the music, but you know, a little effect didn't hurt anybody. Coming down to the last example, just short of the treble clef there. And again, using that those left and right arrows to toggle right on the spot that I need. Let's bring this up again. Like so. Okay, and then last but not least. Okay, now with this one. Again, just short of the treble clef, but it's going to kind of freeze here. And then I didn't bother notating that at the end. All right, now let's go through. And you can see, as we look at our window here for effect controls, you can see it's got all these different keyframes that are built in. And let's check out what it sounds like and what it looks like. I do want to make sure that that first one, yeah, that first one is just, sh just short of the just underneath that treble clef there. So really, it's just a matter of just knowing where the beat is in the music, keyframing that to make sure that the music just moves up or whatever direction you want it to move in. Now that I have this set, I want to export two separate videos. I want to export just my main video of me playing with the audio, and then I also want to export this animation that I just created. doesn't matter what order I do it in. Then I'm going to bring it into a vertical um, sequence here. All right, so I'm going to start right here. I'm going to hit I for in, come down here, hit O for out, so I've got my in and out point set here. I'm gonna do Command M to export a video. All right, again, I'm gonna come down to my usual folder here, and this is gonna be under Office Play. All right, and we said this is Play 2, so I'm gonna save this as Play 2 Music Scroll. And I'm going to export this. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer of this white, as well as this notation example. And I'm going to export without changing my in and out points, so it's automatically uh, in sync. I'm going to go ahead and export this video of me playing. It's in the same place here. And this is going to be simply play two trumpet export all right and then i want to export one more thing and that is i do have an alternate audio on this in which i had piano playing and i'm trying to decide which one i like so you can hear <laughs> to so something i added in logic so i want to export this audio file only Again, the exact same length, and I'm going to change the format to AIFF. And again, this is going to be uh, play two with piano, except this is in sync. Okay, great. Now I want to create a new sequence, and with this new sequence, I'm going to make it vertical so I can use it for a reel or for a YouTube short, TikTok, etc. I'm going to hit new item. And select sequence and I'm gonna go ahead and take this HD format here 
and just change the settings and just flip this so that it's 1080 by 1920. Cool. Hit OK. All right, great. Now what I can do is go ahead and drag in these new files that I just created. All right, so I'm going to start out with my Play 2 Trumpet. Just drag this in. Now it's going to ask me if I want to change the sequence settings because obviously this is a horizontal video being drug into a vertical project, but I do not want to change it. So I'm going to hit Keep Existing Settings. All right, looking pretty good there. All right, now I want to add in the layer of my scroll. So here's Play 2 Music Scroll. All right like so all right looking great and then I'm gonna add one more layer here go back to my background colors and just to make sure I just have a little bit of extra room to play with I am gonna add my white here just to make sure that the full background of everything is white and I'm gonna change this rotation to 90 degrees all right all right let's take this music scroll and move it down it's kind of like all the way down at the bottom of the screen, like so. And then I'm going to change the scale just a little bit to be the exact size I want. Okay, and I'll probably position it about right here. Looking good. Then I'm going to take my trumpet and move that to the top of the screen, like so. Great. And let's see what we have. Now, the only issue here is one, I have double audio coming out. So I'm going to solo one of these so only one audio file is playing. Uh, the other issue is you can see it's kind of cutting out in the bottom. Here's a trick. I'm going to grab this Play 2 music scroll. And if I click here where it says position or scale, you can see I kind of have these handles. So I want to move this down where I can visualize the ha these handles so that these handles are just a little bit lower than this. All right. Let's move it down to about right here. And then because of the way I edit it, there's a bunch of negative space at the top. Now I'm thinking right now about my margins for Instagram. And I'm thinking that I want this to be a little higher because you got all the like the comments and the likes and stuff at the bottom. But I also don't want it to take up that much room at the top. So I'm going to add a crop to this. I'm going to go to effects crop, drag this on top of here, and I'm going to edit the top of this crop here. So it comes down about this much. You can see a bit more of the t-shirt available at chrisjohnsonmusic.com. And let's check it out. Okay, now I got to start playing with it a little bit just because right here, I don't want that much cut off by this point. So let's see if we can get a little bit more of this. About right here, I think, should work well. Now, obviously, I could have just edited this in my original timeline, but I didn't want to do that in this case just so I have the ultimate amount of flexibility. I want to be in a position where if I want to do videos side by side, I've already got the scroll in place and it's already set up. Or if I want to do them top and bottom, they're already set up. So this way I have that independent ability. Let's try one more where we're going to just drag in the version with play. So this is going to be that play sync and see if we like it better when we can hear the chord changes being played. And I'm going to solo this track instead. Yeah, I think I like that version. So I'm just going to come over here. Hit out. Command M. Change my format back to H264 here. And then I'm going to go ahead and export this. And we are good to go. So... Thanks so much for tuning into this video. I hope it helped you learn how to sync together sheet music from Finale or any notation software together with your video to create that scrolling effect. 
If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to like it, to subscribe, and turn on notifications. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy. Peace.